Okay, and we are live. Catal Amigo Stuart here from Spain Speaks with this evening's live stream at 7.35 p.m. It is the 13th of February. Only one day to go before the magical day of St. Valentine's. Hope you all have your special St. Valentine's gift ready for your partners. But today, we're going to look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press, as we normally do, and some comments that have been left on the channel recently as well. Straight into the news. And the first story here about the Canary Islands and the uh, immigration, the irregular immigration situation in the Canary Islands, according to the Premier of those islands, is now uh, reaching its maximum. The Canary Islands Premier calls on Europe to find a solution to the arrival of migrants in the Canary Islands. It's been many months, he says, and solidarity is running out. The president of the Canary Islands, Fernando Clavijo, has called on Europe this Monday for a solution to halt the massive arrival of migrants to the Canary Islands, stating that despite the great solidarity and affection shown by the Canarian people, it has been many months and solidarity is running out. In an interview on 24 Hours of RNE, he stated that behind these arrivals is a business run by mafias trafficking trafficking people, dreams and hopes, and emphasised the need for the resources that, that reached the countries of origin to be used responsibly. We want to convey to Europe that we are Europe and that we want a solution because to give up on this is to lose a battle. The regional president expressed insisting that he refuses, refuses to accept 16 people dying every day on the journey. So, Enough is enough, according to the Premier of the Canary Islands down there. Many months and solidarity is running out, uh, the words of Fernando Clavijo, and calling on Europe to uh, help with the issue. As we saw last week, some 510 million euros will be thrown at this situation, given to Mauritania. Uh, in return for them stopping uh, those boats from leaving Mauritania and reaching the Canary Islands, that uh, trip across the ocean there to the Canary Islands. Some people sceptical as uh, to whether or not that uh, money will be put to good use or not. And Pedro Sanchez, the Prime Minister of Spain, yesterday saying that they're investing in Mauritania's future. Uh, apparently, the idea is for Mauritania to develop sustainable industries with that 500 euros and also stop that illegal immigration route, which before came from Senegal, now from Mauritania. So I imagine, and maybe I'm being a little bit sceptical here, that if it is stopped in Mauritania, it will just move to another country, most likely. Don't know. Time will tell. Next piece of news, and Spain's defence minister on the front foot about uh, Mr Trump's words yesterday or the day before. And Spain considers Trump's statements unacceptable, even though it will not reach 2% defence spending until 2030. Donald Trump's statements targeting countries that do not fulfill, fulfill the promise to invest 2% of their GDP in defence directly concerns Spain. Because the national government is willing to reach that percentage, but through a gradual increase in the defence budget, which would not achieve 2% until 2030. Trump finds future promises insufficient and has already said he might even tell Russia which countries those are so Putin could attack them. Margarita Robles expressed serious concern this Monday about the statements from the candidate for president of the United States, which she described as a nod to the Russian president. I find them unacceptable. It's very serious from all points of view, said Robles. And I think this is the message that many European leaders are putting out, that Mr. Trump's words were unacceptable, were uh, a little bit over the top, and as we can see here, serious in uh, all points of view, as we can see. And uh, lots of comment, lots of debate on the channel in recent times because of what Mr. Trump said. So uh, we'll see what happens uh, with regard to this, whether they are uh, an empty promise or not. I don't know. So we'll wait and see uh, what uh, Mr. Trump's words uh, will mean eventually. If, and I say if, he gets elected to president at the end of the year, I think, right? 
Is he even the candidate yet? Don't know. They're still in that process. So we'll wait and see, but uh, unacceptable, according to Spain's defence minister. Another piece of news here, and uh, a lack of resources to fight drug trafficking. The Guadalajara denounces it, and the Anti-Drug Prosecutor's Office, Office underlines it. Fighting drug trafficking in Cadiz requires numerous human and material resources to address the situation. The Guardia Civil denounces the precarious situation in Barbate for fighting drug trafficking. The anti-drug prosecution, the city council and associations also emphasise this. The Minister of the Interior, Fernando Grande Malasca, who does not consider resigning over these incidents which will not go unpunished, reiterates that it will continue to be a priority for the minister, ministry to invest all that is necessary for greater effectiveness in the fight against drug crime. And of course, we saw the other day that two civil guard officers were killed in their inflatable dinghy trying to stop these massive boats that have sometimes 600 horsepower on the back of them. Uh, trying to stop these uh, drug trafficking boats. Very, very difficult to do if you don't have the means. And the Civil Guard, the City Council, and uh, who was the other one there? The uh, Prosecutor's Office, the Anti-Drug Prosecutor's Office, underlining that there is a lack of resources to fight drug crime here in Spain. And uh, not helping that rumours are that Mr. Malaska cut the budget and also uh, dismantled a very important anti-drug unit in the, in the Civil Guard. Don't know the reason for that. Miss, Mr. Malaska is saying that uh, that uh, wasn't the case, that uh, all the resources necessary uh, are being thrown at this issue, but uh, people here saying that it is not the case. And uh, the boat that the Civil Guard were in the other day trying to stop the, uh, uh, the uh, narco boats was uh, absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. That you just, It was like taking a, a knife to a gunfight, as they say. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how that one plays out, but uh, not good when you're uh, one of your main police forces, because the Civil Guard in Spain is a police force, one of the uh, two uh, national police forces in the country, mainly in rural areas. They take care of policing in rural areas, uh, but uh, under for under uh, budgeted there in some areas. Now into the uh, comment section, this one here firstly from Simon. The street cleaners where I live are out every day. They are unemployed women and, who, and, and do not get given benefits unless they do community service. This is in the Almanzora, Almanzora Valley. Don't know where that is. I think it might be uh, somewhere in the south of Spain. But uh, street cleaners out every day. Uh, unemployed women who don't get given benefits unless they do community service. And I have heard that happens in other places as well. I think in Portugal that happens because I do see a lot of um, uh, women cleaning the streets. We have here unemployed women who don't get benefits unless they contribute to con do community service. But uh, yeah, where I live, that is not the case. Uh, that is not the case. We have people that have uh, uh, paid employment to clean the streets. And that's probably why we don't see them very often because uh, there's not many of them. So maybe a good idea to turn people who are unemployed into street cleaners. Don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But according to Simon here, it seems to be working. He has a clean neighborhood because of these um, uh, people cleaning the streets for their benefits. Hmm. Another one here from Marcus. The one that one thing is litter, the other is graffiti. It seems to have stepped up a couple of years ago, not just in Murcia, but pretty much everywhere in Spain. Perhaps we need a disincentive more like that in Singapore, up to three years in prison, a caning and a fine. Well, I can tell you right now, Marcus, that that will never happen here in Spain. Uh, you will never get caning brought in for uh, graffiti artists. Uh, neither will prison sentences be brought in. In fact, uh, the governments here, the police forces here, whoever is trying to stop graffiti is not doing a very good job. And as Marcus points out, it seems to have um, stepped up uh, over in recent years. Now, I don't know in recent years. It's always been a problem that, I, that I've seen here in Madrid. Everything is uh, graffitied. It doesn't matter what public infrastructure uh, is uh, out there, bridges, walls, everything is graffitied. Always the same people, and uh, it's a ugly graffiti. What more can I say? But uh, people put up with it. They just uh, move on with their daily lives, probably because, probably because they've got other things to worry about 
than graffiti. And uh, I saw somebody in the neighborhood that I live had their wall graffitied recently with this uh, with a huge piece of um, graffiti on the wall. And uh, that, in my opinion, is a serious problem and uh, a, a, an inconvenience for the owners of that property. But if there's no um, um, uh, tougher penalties, not suggesting the ones that Marcus puts forward there, but even just uh, you know getting caught and maybe even community service or something like that could be an idea. But uh, yeah, graffiti artists don't often get caught, or at least I don't think so. Another one here from uh, Rosebud. I'm sure Trump didn't say this, or at least mean what you have reported. Honestly, the witch hunt around Trump is wicked. Well, sorry to break your uh, bubble there, uh, Rose, but uh, Trump did say exactly what I said yesterday. In fact, I wrote down verbatim what Trump said, basically. And uh, we saw that uh, countries in Europe not happy about Mr. Trump's words. I'm not going to uh, say whether he was right or wrong with what he said, but it's the way that you say it. And that's what I was getting to. And uh, this was actually a mild comment because some of the uh, vitriol that uh, came onto the channel as a result of mentioning Mr. Trump and mentioning Tucker Carlson and ha and uh, speaking not positive positively about those two people. Amazing some of the comments that I got on the channel uh, over the last couple of days. And uh, really, those people that wrote those comments should have a really good look at themselves and uh, and wonder exactly who they are supporting and why they are supporting this type of thing. I can't understand it. But when it comes to uh, taking your abuse out on me because I have an opinion on something, take a good look at yourself, my friend. Take a good look at yourself. You know who you are. One here from Pascal. Murcia, fantastic place to spend a few winter months. Uh, but to all those wanting to visit, be careful not to dive headfirst into the outdoor pool. Water levels may be excessively low. The med is still your best option. Yeah, don't know about that, uh, Pascal, because uh, somebody sent a comment through today saying that uh, community pools might not even be filled up this summer in some parts of Malaga, the Mediterranean, if it doesn't rain soon and rain a lot. That's going to be an issue, as we mentioned yesterday, for the tourist sector. Are people going to come to Spain if the hotel pool doesn't have any water in it or can't be filled up? Don't know. Those are the questions. Are people going to come to Spain if they can only have uh, showers between certain times of the day? Uh, to uh, abide by restrictions that might be in place on the Costa del Sol? I don't know. Those are some questions that are being put forward. But Murcia also has water issues. Alicante has water issues. In fact, a lot of Spain has water issues. So uh, hopefully we'll get them sorted out. Don't know. Another one here from uh, Peter. I was in Torre Molinos last week and it chucked down with rain on Friday. Yeah, Peter, just because it rains one day or two days or three days or even a week in that part of Spain isn't enough, unfortunately, to fill the reservoirs and uh, fix the drought situation. It's uh, been too dry. It does rain every now and again, but Spain doesn't get that persistent or might get in the UK or Ireland, uh, which, as you guys know there, uh, is a fairly green and wet place. Don't get that persistent rain. Spain, uh, when, it's, uh, when it does rain, it does rain hard, that is true, uh, but all for, for, uh, uh, too far and uh, few are the uh, rainfalls, uh, far and few between are the rainfalls, I think that's the expression in Spain currently in many places, and it's an issue, except in the north of the country, which is also green because you get that constant rain, but in the south, not the case. And the final one here from user, not sure who it is, says, Stu. What is the long-term solution for the water shortages in Spain? Yeah, good question. And uh, I wish I knew the answer to that. Some people reply to this saying uh, desalination, and that's one of the options, of course. But desalination has its critics because it's uh, energy intensive, not good for the environment. And uh, I'm not sure if that's the way to go or not. It could be. Some people are uh, pro-desalination. Some people are not. Some people say that Spain needs to uh, look at the ways that it collects the water when it falls on the ground. A lot of people complain that it just runs off into the sea. I'm not sure. That uh, might be a problem as well. And there are other plans to bring water from the green part of the Spain, the humid part of the country, as they call it here, La España Humida, to the dry south of the country. But that's a plan that's been uh, in progress for a long, long time and uh, politically very difficult very difficult to get a, um, uh, across the line 
because of uh, Spain's complicated autonomous community system where different governments with different ideas and different uh, ways of looking at things control parts of the country. So you might be living in Castilla y León and you have uh, one type of government, but in Asturias, a neighbouring autonomous community, you might have uh, a political party on the other side of politics, which makes it difficult to get things done. And the central government really um, uh, drags its feet when it comes to uh, fixing these problems. If you, li- if you listen to some of the past presidents, yeah, they all have ideas. We should have done this, we should have done that, but we couldn't get it across the line. They talk about a hydroelectric uh, plan or something like or some type of hydro plan uh, here in Spain, which uh, has been years in the pipeline. But I think um, nobody knows the final solution to fix Spain's water issues. And uh, every day in the paper, another one pops up. So uh, I don't know. If you've got an idea how to fix the water issues here, let us know in the comment section. Now, into the chat section, I'm going to go. Before I do that, I'm going to put the uh, like icon on the screen. If you haven't hit the like icon yet, please do so. Just below the video, you will find it. 45 currently, two dislikes. Maybe somebody didn't like (laughs) what I said before, which is uh, most likely. Uh, But, uh, you know, as uh, some people told me, uh, Stuart, you know, keep your mouth shut when you talk about things that uh, don't concern you. Those were the words people were saying. Talk about Spain. We don't want you to talk about things that you don't know anything about. Sorry for having an opinion on something. Sorry. And basically, if that's the way that that country's going, I'd be getting out. I'd be getting out because if you can't have an opinion on something or if people shoot you down every time you have an opinion on something, what type of world are we living in? Let's be honest. But anyway, we'll move on. Now, I'm going to change the backdrop as well. This uh, photo was sent in from uh, Steve, who's in Spain at the moment, recently went to Seville and took this picture of uh, this uh, monument there. I can't remember what this monument is, to be honest. Is it some type of town hall building or something, is it? Don't know. Can't remember. But thanks, Steve, for sending that one through. Uh, I'll just put it onto the backdrop here quickly. And if you've got a similar picture that you would like to see on the backdrop, the email address is this one here, spainspeaks at gmail.com. Feel free to send uh, any of uh, your pictures through of Spain to this email address. Also, if you've got something to send me, if you've got some information on Spain, an article that you would like me to take a look at and maybe bring up on the channel a topic, please feel free. And also um, uh, anything related to Spain, photos, news articles, whatever, feel free. That is the email address. Now, to people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's on uh, Super Thanks, Buying Me a Coffee, Longer Term Supporters on Patreon, thank you very much. And also to the members of the channel who for $1.99 a month uh, get uh, early access to videos, some other perks as well. And all of the uh, Spanish learning content that I'm going to be putting out soon is going to be going to the members section. So if you want to become a member, as uh, 26 people now have done, and the latest member on board is uh, R. Prasad, who um, uh, joined yesterday. So welcome to the channel membership. And uh, as I said, from one ninety nine a month, you can uh, support the channel. Now, let's uh, go into the chat section and uh, see what's happening there. Let's see what's happening in the chat section. Let's uh, go. Andrew, the first one, valued member is Andrew, channel member. Uh, muy buenas. Hope you're uh, all well. From mild but very wet London southeast, wish we could send you some of this rain. Some parts of the country, absolutely, Andrew, that need that rain more than others, as we know. James and Kathy coming in from a wet and cold Worcester. Seven degrees there, wishing they were back in sunny Spain. Yep, a lot of people in the UK, no doubt, and other European countries wishing they were back in sunny Spain, of course. Where today was a beautiful day today. Around 17, 18 degrees Celsius here in Madrid. Fantastic. 24 degrees in Valencia. There we go. And this is the early spring. Uh, anyone surprised at all by anything Trump says or does has not been paying attention? Hmm. There we go. That was the uh, minister who, uh, what were the words? Um, can't remember exactly what she said. I'll look uh, at it in a minute, but um, not happy. Uh, with what uh, Mr. Trump said the other day. 
And uh, yeah, I think um, unacceptable was the uh, term used. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Trump is, uh, I don't want to talk too much about Mr. Trump because the uh, the dislikes <laughs> go up because he has his um, supporters, of course, who are uh, very uh, fanatical is a, a way to use that word. And uh, it's a shame when people are so fanatical about uh, politics. It's a real shame. And as I said to somebody the other day, you know, should we be treating politics as if it was a football game? You know, when you do become fanatical, if you're a supporter of this team, if you're a supporter of the other team, you hate the other person's guts, come on, grow up, please. But anyway, uh, un Acceptable were the words. Maga, also a uh, valued member, coming in from uh, El Campello earlier today. 26 degrees there. It was fantastic. Janet, also a uh, valued member, uh, coming in from Oxford in the UK, where I imagine it's wet. Johnny, finally, England uh, from England to Spain to the USA, the people have become too complacent, thus the... Rise of politicians, I think that word should be. Rise of politicians like Trump or Vox or Boris. We should all pack our bags. But to where, says Johnny. Yeah, good idea. It is worrying the rise of some of these politicians. People were surprised the last time this gentleman came around. And uh, he's back again. So that tells me a lot. Uh, Vox as well. And uh, some of the comments coming out of Vox recently, I mean... I don't know who their audience is, but, you know, people accused me the other day of being stupid. I mean, look at yourself in the mirror, my friend. Not you, Johnny, of course. The uh, Carlson-Putin uh, interview wouldn't have happened if Putin didn't write the script. Well, a lot of people say that uh, Mr. Putin might have written the, might have, Mr. Putin might have written the script. Uh, I think it was one of those interviews where if you put it into, like, uh, a concept that people will understand in a baseball game, uh, if you've got the best uh, batter in the world and you just sort of lob a ball to him, what's he going to do with the ball? He's going to smash it out of the park. And that's what Mr. Putin did with those questions, right? Because it is it is what it was. But again, don't want to criticise. Yogi coming in from uh, London. Alan coming in from San Diego, valued member, 13 degrees there, sunny at uh, 10.30. There we go. Hope you're well, Alan. Trump has uh, writers uh, backed by lots of research writing his words. Somewhere in the research, Trump's right discovered criticizing NATO states and not paying their fair share will win him votes. Sad. Yeah, probably that's the, uh, the script, right, Johnny? Absolutely. It's all about getting uh, the votes and telling people what they want to hear. Richard, good evening. Another regular uh, viewer and also valued member. Uh, booking the flights for our Spain trip this year and have noticed prices have risen consider considerably and the planes are filling up fast. Spain's going to be very busy again. No doubt, Richard, it will be. Uh, don't know whether we'll, we'll be breaking records this year. The, uh, the uh, country would like to break tourism records, but there are some issues this year when it comes to water and people worry that it might put people off not being able to... Um, to uh, turn on the tap whenever they want. Don't know. Bit sick of the cold weather. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine you get sick of that weather there. Very monotonous weather. Easy to get sick of, right? Uh, High Flyer, also a valued member. Finally home from work. Cruz Campo in hand, waiting for the live stream. Have a great week. Thanks, John. Will do. Laura coming in from Valencia. Saludos desde Valencia. Welsh Toto on the chat as well. Hi. Uh, no solution to that problem, I'm afraid. Don't think so, uh, Welsh Toto. Absolutely right. No solution to that problem. Paul Gerard, also a valued member in the chat. Evening all. Good evening. Uh, exploring with Jen coming in from uh, sunny Valencia. Yeah, I think we saw 24 degrees, was it, today in Valencia, Jen? Mm, enjoy. Barbara coming in from that part of Spain as well on the Ave train home from Valencia with a li with a lively group of ladies. Fantastic walk on a gorgeous sunny day, 24 degrees. There we go. Can't complain about uh, 24 degrees on uh, on the 13th of February, right? Can't complain. The two percent is the NATO expectation. Why should American taxpayers pay? Hmm. Yeah. Why should they? Good question. Break it up. Break it up. 
John Smith saying Trump got it right. All of these EU countries in NATO agreed to pay 2%. F- far time they did. Obviously, uh, what's the reason they don't pay it? Is it because they can't afford to? What's the reason? I don't know. What's the reason they don't pay? Is it because people here don't want to spend money on defence, maybe? Is that the reason? Maybe it's a difficult sell. Maybe it's an easy sell in the States to spend money on defence. But a more difficult uh, sell in some European countries to spend money on defence. I don't know. It all comes down to the politics of certain countries, right? Michael coming in from uh, Berlin. November election, says uh, David. Yeah, I thought that was it. November election. Uh, El Puerto, Alan saying, has a, an army of street cleaners and street cleaning machines. Very clean indeed, says Alan. Yeah, I think a lot of places seem to be clean. Not where I live, unfortunately. Or maybe I'm, uh, I'm too, um, maybe I'm too uh, demanding with my cleanliness. I don't know. Sean, surely as a sovereign nation, Spain could retain the right to just return to the all the illegal immigrants back to their country they came from. Eventually, eventually they would uh, give up trying, as it would be futile. Yeah, back to the country they came from. Well, the problem is, I think that a lot of these uh, people. For whatever reason, they don't have documentation. So nobody knows where they come from. So it's difficult to send people back to where they come from. And of course, once they leave Mauritania, you can't send them back there because they're not from there. That's the issue. There should be tougher penalties for graffiti. Mm, yeah, there should be. You've got to catch them first. Janet saying, uh, in the UK, too many lawyers with vested interests, it's an industry. Yeah, lawyers are the only people that get rich. When all of these things happen, lawyers are the only people that get rich. Kim Steele, it's unacceptable that people that have no idea of international relations make such, make such comments. Uh, you're talking about, uh, who are you talking about, Kim? Uh, be a bit more uh, specific in the comment, please. Dr. Andres agrees that the words used by Trump are not only unacceptable but over the top. However, it's the effect is that if Europe defends itself instead of counting on us, so be it. Mm, why not? That's right. Maybe that's what Europe should do. Set up its own army. That could be an idea, right? Don't rely on the United States. Yeah, why not? Get them out of uh, the, Ameri- the uh, US bases that they have on European soil. Yeah, put an end to that. Set up their own army. That could be an idea. <laughs> Good luck. Frank coming in. There's more to life on holidays than a pool. Explore the beautiful country. Yeah, for some people, Frank, but for others, no. The pool is the most important thing, to be able to sit by it and have a cocktail. That's why some people go on holiday. Maybe direct and encourage street art. Yeah, well, the people that uh, write the graffiti, I'm sure, would argue that for them it is street art. For us, it's not, but for them it probably is Belinda. Don't know. One, two, three, Sean Away, valued member, heard a comment on radio today about a supermarket in Spain that got into trouble for using its security cameras to profile known shoplifters. Anyone know how it turned out? Yeah, it all comes down to the uh, data uh, regulations. Um, one, two, three. Be very careful putting uh, uh, cameras up in public spaces. You have to be very careful indeed, especially when filming people without their permission. Even if they are shoplifting, the uh, data rules and regulations are very strict and people have a lot of um, uh, privacy protection. Alan, hi Stu, hope all is well. Going back to Tavernas for a couple of months to finish our casa, then finalise our move and leave the UK behind. Good one, Alan. Hope all goes well with that move. Leaving the UK behind and the... uh, the bad weather mainly, right? Jonathan, Trump's actions do not match what he says. He acted uh, similarly with Kim Jong-un, and it worked. Trump actually beefed up NATO during his, his presidency. He talks this way to get EU countries to pay their 2%. There we go. Yeah, publicity probably, right? Today I've been lucky and can watch you live, always watch afterwards. My boyfriend Ewan is in the process of applying for the digital nomad visa and watching you keeps him informed about Spain's news. Thanks, Laura, for that. Hope uh, Ewan goes uh, gets his uh, digital nomad visa. Uh, boycott NATO. 
Uh, it is uh, a killer of all peace in Europe, says uh, Yal. Thanks, uh, Yal, for that comment. Miguel says, uh, I think Asnard blamed Thetepe some days ago for dismantling the National Hydro- Hydrologic Plan. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, right? It just goes back and forth. Nobody gets, <laughs> nothing ever gets done. All of these things just go back and forth. Uh, when it was already in the EU funds as well. There we go. It all becomes a political game of ping pong. And the problems still exist. Poor Gerard saying, my fair lady got it right with the rain in Spain, stays mainly on the plane. Yeah, that was the famous uh, sentence, right? Uh, in the Spanish translation, they didn't say the uh, same words. I think in uh, Spanish it was, uh, la lluvia in Sevilla es una maravilla. Graffiti, says Joe, is a huge problem in Lanzarote, but even worse and much more dangerous in the, is the burning of rubbish bins and recycling bins. Also, cars are regularly burnt. Yeah, that's an issue, right? When you start burning those things. Don't know why that happens, but it happens here as well. Don't know whether it's deliberate or people put uh, stuff in the rubbish bins that easily catches on fire. <laughs> that could be an issue. I've seen people take their... Um, the coals from their fireplaces and put them in the rubbish. Don't know why. Somebody took the coals from their uh, fire and took them over to uh, a... Um, uh, uh, here they call it a descampado, but it's like a an area where there's just uh, uh, weeds and bush growing on it. And that caught on fire as well. The uh, fire people had to come out. So, yeah, don't know. Is it deliberate or is it um, uh, happening on purpose? Janet's saying, the Plaza, de, the Plaza de, de España is the photo behind us, built for the Ibero-American Expo. There we go. The Expo in Seville. I remember that, yeah. Uh, Marco in the chat. Great to join the live. Best uh, primetime Spanish news reporter in Spain, in Marco's opinion. Great entertainment, and I'm looking forward to getting back to Spain soon. Best regards, Marco. I think we've got a dog there in uh, Seville. Is that a dog there in the photo? Don't know. I think it is. Uh, Plus, the uh, España says the author of the photo, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen, for that. Good photo as well. Thanks. Uh, Rocky coming in from a, a cold Vancouver. Love the show. Keep it up. Always some bad apples in the baskets, Jew. Yeah, I was surprised, you know, by uh, some of the comments. Uh, really long comments as well. So people have got a lot of time on their hands as well. Uh, one comment was at least... <sighs> Would have been at least uh, four or five hundred words. Unbelievable. I should frame them. Uh, Spain is hot in July and August. Thanks, uh, Judy, for that. Princess uh, Leah walked over the bridges, one of the bridges in Star Wars, says Liz. Thanks uh, for that as well. I didn't know that. Fab Station from Brighton, says Press GB. Thanks for that. Alan uh, with a comment here, if NATO was broken up, uh, Putin would cause all sorts of problems for a number of EU countries. Yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. That's what Finland's worried about at least. I'm sure some of those Baltic countries are a little bit nervous as well. But anyway... John, the saying the reason is because it's easy for EU nations to pass on the costs to the EU taxpayer, US taxpayer, sorry, and shrug it off. There we go. That's the reason. Uh, Stephen enjoyed some uh, fantastic temperatures or lovely temperatures in Puerto Banos, 23 degrees, and some nice wine. Mikael coming in from Torrox Costa. Hello, Stuart, and all listening. Good to see you, uh, Mikael. Justino or Justino, I think the government is still paying back the latest, uh, the last EU rescue packages to save the banks a few years ago. Sanchez takes, is that takes, never gives. Yeah, a lot of money uh, being paid back. You are absolutely right. The whole banking system was bailed out. All of those bad banks that uh, had to be bailed out uh, 10 years ago. Yep, it is what it is. The idea of an EU army is hilarious. Uh, only the UK and France have anything like a fighting force. The rest of Europe has been freeloading off the USA for defence since 1945. Probably so. Probably so. 
What else? Janet's saying a brilliant idea for anyone who is unemployed. It's a good way to keep all areas clean and to get benefits in uh, return. Yeah, why not? But uh, you've got to convince them uh, first, right? Put the carrot uh, there. Uh, do this or you won't get this. Athna has become a complete nutcase. I think he always was, to be honest, Welsh Toto. I don't think there's anything new there. Uh, we actually went to Murthia to visit Ikea today. Baza- bizarre, the car park next was full of motorhomes all resting in the sun. Yeah, they've probably been kicked out of other places, so they need to go to a, find a place to park, right? I saw it in uh, Tenerife uh, out of uh, a car park uh, right on the beach. There were lots of people parking there. What else we got going on here? Uh, let's, let's have a look. Marco sent a 50 uh, euro donation. Um, not sure, Marco, uh, about that. I don't normally mention the donations on the channel. Uh, I normally just uh, give a like to the donations. If it was done through the Super Chat, if it was done on the live stream, I would have. But if it wasn't, maybe not. But I'll check it out, Marco, and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. But thanks for the uh, contribution. Uh, Miguel saying, we can't deny Vladimir knows a lot about history. He has all the archives as well. Mm-hmm. Welsh is uh, guilty of uh, the odd long comment. Yeah, I wasn't talking about yours, uh, Welsh. These were some other people that we won't be seeing any of their comments anymore. And um, solar life in Portugal, helping us uh, settling in Portugal, Stu. We have to say we're blown away by the uh, by visiting beautiful Merida the other day. What a Roman gem it is. Yeah, it is a nice city. I'm planning to go there soon, Merida in Extremadura. And Alan saying, uh, I wish good luck to the guys, uh, Mothos de Orosa on, what's that? Telethinko? Already won well over one million. Yeah, don't know what that is. Uh, don't know what that show is. Obviously, I'm here, so I, <laughs> I can't be watching those shows, Alan. But thanks for that. Now, that's the end of the comments uh, or the chat section today. Thank you very much for uh, watching. Time to wrap the live stream up. I'll be back again tomorrow with another regular video, so hopefully you'll uh, tune into that one. Another live stream again on Tuesday. Hope to see you there. Uh, Hasta luego. Hasta entonces. Adios. Bye-bye.